Well, welcome to the latest Rafe Vaughan Williams Society video cast, as I suppose we must call them. It's my pleasure this time to welcome the Finnish conductor Sakari Oromo. Maestro Oromo is chief conductor of the BBC Symphony Orchestra and holds positions with the Royal Stockholm Philharmonic and the Finnish National Radio Symphony Orchestras. And the reason for inviting him to join us on this occasion is that at the time of this recording, he's about to conduct a performance from Vaughan Williams's Sea Symphony at the Barbican Hall in London with the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, first question, I guess, is how many times have you actually conducted this work? I know you did it, did it at the proms, I don't know, seven or eight years ago? Ten. Ten years ago. It was my first prom as chief conductor of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, actually. And... Um, yeah, yes, that was one. And then I did it a couple of years later in Stockholm with the Eric Eriksson Chamber Choir, somewhat enlarged, and the Royal Stockholm Philharmonic. Uh, but that's it. Those are the two performances of the work that I've I've conducted so far. And I so hope you, there will be many more. Did, did you ask to perform it at the proms or were you asked to do it? I can't recall. It's such a long time ago. Um, I might very well have asked to perform it, but equally, it could have been a proposition that came from the proms. I'm not quite sure. Uh, would, would you have known it at that time? Uh, as music? Yes, yes, I would have known it. I would have known of it, and I would have known it uh, perhaps mostly through Sir Andrew Davies's recording with the VVC Symphony Orchestra, which is already like 20 years old or something. But, but I think it's a really good recording. Yeah. So you did it with the, the forces in in Stockholm. Um, did you pick up any sense before you started rehearsing that the choir were a little bit, oh, should we be doing this? Or were they enthusiastic from the start? Oh, the Eric Erickson Chamber Choir, they were really enthusiastic. And, and I think they did it really well as well. Um, and, and of course, I mean, they are one of the world's foremost choruses and, and they're professional and they are like um, completely masterful and they can, you know, uh, also perform some really big music, just slightly enlarged because the voices are so so big and so so prominent. So um, I remember it as a very happy experience, actually. Yeah, I mean, did they and did you or do you think of this as very distinctively British music? No, because it's American poetry for start. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I don't think uh, what Wiltman would have thought about behold the sea. He would have said behold the sea, like a real, this broad accent. And and maybe I, I I should try to achieve some of that with, with the BBC Symphony Chorus as well next week. Um, of course, yes, of course, Ray Vaughan Williams. I mean, he, he is an English composer for sure. Um, but he had also so many influences from from Ravel and for, from studying in France and 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 all those things. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit sort of reluctant to always categorize music by the nationality of the composer. There's much more to it than than just that. And of course, it's one factor to have music written in a certain country, but but then it creates uh, so many problems along the way that I think it's better to just speak about music as such yeah we of course we could be speaking about Sibelius and Tchaikovsky in that regard as well of course you know uh, Sibelius was it, born as a subject of the Russian Empire of course and yeah. and uh yeah and Tchaikovsky was well what he was what he was and uh and so on and and more recently let's say Kaya Sariaho, who was born in Finland but spent most of her working life in France did she write Finnish music? No. She wrote music in Finnish sometimes, her songs, uh, but sometimes also not, or sometimes also in other, other languages, like her operas, mostly. Yeah. So we're into Walt Whitman. We've talked briefly there about Walt Whitman. Um, and what is your usual approach with a work like this, a crawl work like this? Do you, in a sense, work outwards from the meaning of the text, or do you first start with the music, I wonder? I think in this case, and in the case of most large choral orchestra works, one has to start from working out what the text means. And then from there on, because that's how the composer started working. And, and I think from, from there on, you can kind of decipher almost everything that is in the music. 
um, uh, and and also I think Von Williams um, at that stage he was still in the early stages of his, his career, and and somehow I feel that this the, the, this Sea Symphony is a kind of decisive work for him because he created or he found his own voice here, partly through uh, assimilating to Walt Whitman's poetry, which was of course this free verse kind of thing. So so it doesn't have you know this. Uh, poetic mannerisms it's like free flowing language and and i feel very much that von williams picked that up brilliantly and and perhaps very intuitively as well and and then went on uh, developing those ideas in his purely instrumental music also later on so, so lots of images in in the text uh lots of ideas i mean can we talk in terms of an ultimate message of this symphony, looking at it simplistically, and obviously we we tend to look at the last movement, especially. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, yes, I think it's a message of of humanism. So, of course, it starts talking about you know ships and flags and stuff, but but really the the essence of the piece for me is uh, is its kind of appreciation and and love of humanism. And uh, and I see it also partly, or maybe even completely, as a metaphor of life, and and so uh, the voyage that is being undertaken, or or being alone on the beach in the second movement, or or facing the the, the ferocious waves in the third scherzo, it did. I think it's all a metaphor of of human life, also, and and uh, I think you should be able to sort of. To smell the 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 odor of the sea, the sort of incredible salty atmosphere is there, but uh, deep down, I I think it has more meaning than just just depicting what it actually looks like to be depicting. It, it's always interesting to hear whether or not conductors, performers generally like to read in terms of background to a piece of music. And here, of course, we could say, well, this is tapping into this amazing, uh, uh, the amazing advances in international shipping uh, at, at, at the time Walt Whitman's writing and at the time Vaughan Williams is writing the music. I mean, is, is history background something that you, you like to gen up on? It certainly is. I, I always do, actually, and I, I try to sort of be quite meticulous in in looking at what composers were up to in the in the times when they wrote certain pieces, and also um, of the sort of more wide artistic and philosophical background that that exists behind these big pieces. And of course, more than anything, in these large vocal pieces, either with chorus or with soloists or both. Um, it's just such an essential part of understanding the music and understanding where it all comes from. And, and this goes, you know, to, to everything I, I perform, I try to be sort of equally, equally interested in the backgrounds, be it St. Matthew Passion or, or be it a, a Messian, uh, a big oratorio, a Transfiguration or whatever. It, it, it's, it's always uh, kind of quite important for me, be also because it gives inspiration to the interpretation of the music itself. I mean, would you talk to players about the historical background? Is that something you do to put images in their minds? Um, usually I tend to avoid talking too long to players. Sometimes I use metaphors, but they are on the brief side. And, and I know that uh, amongst my players, there are many that are really interested and, and, and really know everything, maybe even more than me about, you know, the literary background of, for instance, this piece. And, and uh, in a way, I, um, I trust my players to sort of be aware what they are playing about. But of course, it, it doesn't harm if you use kind of a brief verbal metaphor to, to, to get the sound you want. But I mean, it, basically, my job is to make the extra play, not to give them lectures. Yeah. An unfair question, perhaps, but I mean, does does the Sea Symphony deserve a higher place internationally in the ranking of major choral works? Should it be better known, do you think? I think it's pretty well known. I mean, uh, 
th there are like close to 20 at least recordings in existence of it already and and i think it's a big number for such a vast work um and, and they are not all British at all. I mean, there are also good American recordings. There are some good European recordings and so on. So so I, I would say, actually, the Sea Symphony is pretty well known and admired. And, and also my students, my conducting students that I teach here in Helsinki, um, most of them know the piece and admire it and would like to one day get their hands on it. And maybe some of them will. Uh, as for you, well, you mentioned the performance of the Sea Symphony in, in Stockholm. Uh, Vaughan Williams' works that you perform around the world, you know, other pieces, what might they be? I have performed, uh, of course, the obvious Talis Fantasy and Lark Ascending many times. I have also performed symphonies number four, six and nine here and there, you know, in Finland, in Sweden, in Birmingham, back back in my time as music director of the CBSO. Um, so I have done quite a lot of pieces, also the Wasps Overture, which is great fun. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to maybe doing, you know, expanding my Vaughan Williams repertoire a little bit more. Uh, there are conductors who do more of his music than I do, um, but it's really about setting the priorities and, and what feels right uh, at, at any given moment. Well, look, thank you so much for what you've done for Vaughan Williams so far. We look forward to seeing what you offer us in the future. And of course, we wish you all the best for the performance of the Sea Symphony at the Barbican Hall. Thank you so much, Maestro. Many thanks, many thanks. Oh.